One of the biggest challenges with collecting video games, or really any sort of collection quite honestly, is how and where are you going to store that collection? I look at coming off of the Bloomington Normal GameCon just a few days ago, and I added four titles to my collection just from that, and I've added several cents. Hey everybody, Gary here with Rockstar Productions. Welcome to today's episode. I hope you do appreciate it. What I want to know from you here in this video, how do you store your collection? I'm really kind of interested to hear from you. Now, over the years, kind of looking over here, I have my storage case for the Nintendo 64 for Super Nintendo. I have, you know, a couple of these Super NES cases. I don't have a whole lot of great ways to store my NES collection. I've got the, the rack here and, you know, my Famicom stuff, and I've got shelving. But if I've just got loose games, it's kind of been a challenge for me to store my stuff. Now, Joe from Cinco Play Games had a, I believe it was a Kickstarter, could have been Indiegogo, for his video game storage racks that he has. And I've seen, if you haven't checked them out yet, Yet, check out Discart. He has got an amazing channel, and if you are looking for excellent ways to store your collection, his setup is beautiful. He does a lot of 3D prints. He can help you get your stuff organized. Now, I believe Discart has actually been a user of these stands for a while. Now, Cinco Play Games have gone from like a 3D printed style to what's in this box here is now, from my understanding, injection molded. So it should have an overall better look and feel to it. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to unbox these. We're going to try to set them up. We're going to see how it holds our games and how it goes into our storage racks that we have here. Let's go hit the photo bench. Yes, yes, I know, it's just a box. Uh, now we have gone ahead. I was gonna open this up and kind of show you the pieces during the intro, but I wanted a fresh look at this. Oh, very cool. Now this was one of the bonuses uh, for those who backed it was you did get a one-up cleaning card. Now one thing of note is the fact that uh, these are the newer style cards. They actually have a lower profile material here. So this should work even better in things like N64 cartridges than what the originals did. I tended to use um, these in NES, Super NES, Genesis and Master System and Famicom cartridges. And then in the uh, N64, I actually used the 1UP Mini, and this is designed for Game Boy cartridges, but it worked terrific for the N64. And it does have the Single Play Retro Game Stands logo on the back, so very cool. Again, congratulations to our good friend Adam from 1UP Card, who has had a lot of success as of late. Here's some information on Single Play Display Stands for your game room. Um, our goal is to make you 100% a happy customer. If the product does not meet your needs, please contact us. For display ideas and game room inspiration, check out our gallery on Instagram at Single Play Games. So good information there too. And like I mentioned, um, check out Discard. He has got a lot of great stuff. Now I don't know if there's any assembly required. Oh no, this is all one setup, terrific. So I actually got the pack that included, I wanna say four is what I went with. Yep, and that's exactly what it looks like is I've got four here. So interesting way that these pretty much are set up and will hold and store your games. So, and he offered them in, I think there was a clear version. I'll pop up the different variants uh, that he had available. And one holds one, two, three, four, five, six games. Um, and this is like an ABS plastic. So it is not a 3D printed material, nothing really on the bottom. I do kind of wish this was flat because um, you're, you know, a little bit of rockiness there to it. Uh, if you are going to conventions and things, this would be actually a great way to display your wares for sale. And we're gonna set all but one of these aside and they don't, like there's nothing that clicks them together or anything and you wouldn't want that because quite honestly, with the width of the cartridges, you need them to kind of be spaced out a little bit. So what we're gonna do is, the way it looks like is the cartridges just go right into this little lip. I've got a Famicom game. We're gonna start with that. Goes right in, pretty good there. What about a Genesis game next? One of my favorite games of all time, Earthworm Jim 2. Now, there's no discernible crunch or anything, so you don't have to worry about it damaging your pins. Uh, how about Super Nintendo? Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. There's that. Uh, next, how about one of the worst games of all time, thanks 
uh, Ryan from Castlemania Games for suggesting this one. Of course, Demon Sword. Uh, so you can see how it kind of can hold cartridges from different systems all at once. Oh, I actually missed one. So there's that. Another thing you can do, I'm going to set that one aside, bring another one forward. Let's say that you have different cleaners. So, like I mentioned, one of cleaning card. Here's the Sega Genesis cartridge cleaner, or the system cleaner. Here's my Super NES one. And for good here is my one for the NES. So, if I had more of them, I could go ahead and store them and have them neatly displayed or organized to keep everything together. Now, one thing, you do have to center this on your own. So looking at, there's a seam here, making sure that it's kind of centered with that center screw. Uh, same thing with the Super NES. There is actually nothing to kind of center that. The Genesis one looked pretty centered. So uh, good way to display those. Now, looking at this too, I wanna check and see he does offer ones for uh, handhelds. I don't think this is wide enough for Game Boy cartridges. You could. Um, I would honestly say go with his Game Boy offering instead. Uh, that would probably be a better way to do it. Uh, but overall, pretty slick way to go ahead and display your stuff. Now, I'm going to actually go ahead and load this up with uh, six games on each of these and see how it looks in my storage cabinet. So, perfect example here. I've got the three Adventure Island games for the NES. I'm going to go just start at the bottom. We're going to go with the first one, second one. The third one, and the nice thing, nicely balanced, it's not wanting to tip over or anything. I've got three more spots here, and for those, what I'm going to do, Castlevania. So we'll start with the original, and then Simon's Quest, and finally, Dracula's Curse. Nice looking display here right now with the three Adventure Island games, followed by the three Castlevania games. Now one thing I didn't show you was N64 games, and that was my bad. I hate that saying, but it's true, it was my bad. And what I'm gonna do with this is, this is going to be my Japanese uh, games that I have. So uh, this, instead of doing it alphabetical or anything like that, because I don't have a whole lot of series, it's basically just gonna be random. So I have Star Wars, I believe this is Rogue Squadron, for the Japanese N64, Cory Q, I think that's what's called. It's like Penny Racers here in the States. That guy there. Not Dorman, um, can't remember his name. One of the baseball games. This is Blast Dozer, which is a great, great game. And then finally, I've got Kirby 64. So as you can see, there's a variety of different ways that you can use these to display your collection. So again, Japanese import N64 games, you know, games in a series for the NES. Speaking of games in a series, now granted, the Adventure Island, Castlevania one, pretty cool. What can we possibly put in this one? Ideas. I have some ideas because, well, so let's just say that you happen to have the Famicom version of Super Mario Brothers. I'm gonna slide that over. It's one of the things, there's no real easy way to tell if it's centered. So how about, uh, the U.S. version of Super Mario 2. Get that lined up. Okay, that's a good start. Well, next up, let's go to the NES. And I mean, I love the fact that I can actually save these sleeves for other things. Got this at the Southeast Game Exchange in 2019. The original Mario Brothers. Might be a bit of a theme going here. Super Mario Duck Hunt. Well, if you've got Mario USA for the Famicom, I guess that you kind of need Super Mario Brothers 2 for the NES. And we got to finish it out in style. I mean, if we've got one and two, the original, one and two, we need three. Now, the thing with this version is it's not the left one, unfortunately. And I actually have another copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 box. So I can keep the box one as it is and simply go ahead and play that version then. So, uh, pretty neat little Tower of Mario that we have going on here. The one thing I will say is sometimes, you know, it does feel like the 
cartridges are going to rock side to side um, and it is a little bit challenging to just get things uh, centered in there like here I am off to the side wow so it might be better to come in from the back side to get everything centered up and once you are centered go ahead and go uh, up the line instead of down the line here so uh, that is one thing that at least on the NES side of things, or any of them really, uh, is the fact that it's a little bit hard to get things centered up. Um, and one thing I want to check too is, okay, we have this mounted in here. How easy do they fall out? I'd say not very easily, so uh, pretty good overall uh, design and whatnot. And again, we'll show you in a second. We're going to set this up on our display shelves and whatnot, but here you have a look at you know, our Super Mario collection, Adventure Island, and Castlevania. And by doing this, I've now freed up space in my racks. Let's wrap things up. So there you have it, my look at the Cinco Play storage stands designed to hold your retro video game cartridges. What do I think of them? Well, I like the fact that, first of all, they are a molded composite, that it's not 3D printed. That definitely has a better overall look in my opinion. Speaking of which, I do appreciate the fact that he offers different colors and if you've got Game Boy cartridges, Game Boy Advance cartridges, that he does have stands designed to fit those smaller carts too. Um, I love the fact that my overall goal is to get as much stuff in as small of a space as possible. It's one of the reasons that you know I recently upgraded to a JVC XI. It takes up less space than my uh, Model 2 Genesis and Model 2 Sega CD. Not by a lot, but enough. So it does go ahead and compress everything down into a smaller area. Looking behind me here, you know, this is a great way to display some of my favorite cartridges that I don't have boxed. Now, if I had them boxed, I'd display them in a different manner. And for things such as like the N64 import titles, the fact that it gives me a great way to display these in a way that I really didn't have before and I can fit six cartridges in a much smaller space than otherwise I would have been able to. This is something that I may actually reach out to them and place another order for four, five, six of these, especially for like my Famicom games, my Genesis games, and my Master System games that don't have boxes. Heck, my N64 games too. I mean, if you take a look here at the game cases that I removed games from, that's a lot of space that I saved. I've essentially, on the rack over here now, I've got one whole row and I am just getting started. I'm sure I'm going to move stuff around here. Um, I one of the things I didn't really like a whole lot, and this is just me being cheap, is the fact that after I made my initial pledge, when I went to go check out, I had to pay more for shipping and handling. Just in the future, when you're setting up a Kickstarter or Indiegogo, have your cost of shipping figured in to what your pledge cost is. That was something that was a little bit of a turnoff. Now, I realize one man operation going on here and his first real mass produced product and the quality is definitely there. Um, the other minor issue that I would say to, two minor issues I'll say, is getting your game centered on here was kind of a crapshoot sometimes, at least with the NES games, you've got the, the center screw in the back to help you out. You don't really have that with Super NES, Super Famicom, or Famicom games, so you're trying to find the best balance. And I wish the bottom here were either flat, or if it's gonna have these ridges molded into it, give me a rubber foot in between each ridge to give it a more solid platform. But other than that, I mean, those are just simple minor nitpicks. Oh, switch carts don't fit in it either. But if you are looking for a fun way to store your switch carts, check out the Retro 85 from Retro Fighters. I've done a review of this here on the channel. Check it out right up there. Um, great way to store and transport your switch games. But overall, I really, really dig this. I'm starting to run out of room now on this rack where my switch cartridges are. Down below, I have my Famicom disk system and um, uh, some overload or overfill extended inventory, too much inventory filler type games like the Muppet Caper game or whatever that I picked up uh, a few months back. That's the crap games are down there. Uh, my good games are right here and now my good games are on the Cinco Play game stands. Now if you do want to go ahead and learn more about this I will have a link down below in a pinned comment where you can go ahead and check them out. 
Now, if you do have any other comments or questions, as always, you can feel free to email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can send me a message through Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductions. GK. Now, uh, we do have the one-up cleaning card, that this nice bonus, and uh, thank you again, Adam, for working with uh, Single Play Retro Game Stands to make this happen. If you're looking to pick up some one-up gaming cards, make sure you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. He has the full line of one-up cleaning accessories, the cards, the system cleaners, and the solution. And the cool thing over there, too, if you use promo code ROCKSOLID10, that's going to save you 10% right off the top. Um, yeah, these are super, super cool. I, I, as you can see behind me, I have been reworking things. I mean, we had to accommodate the Super Famicom Junior box that's in here now. You know, we have the JVC XI in here. We have a new AV switcher, which we'll be featuring in a future video. The Famicom disc system now that's in here hooked up to our HDMI modded NES. There's so much stuff that I've added here. So trying to get more stuff in a smaller area, this is definitely going to help me out. Now, if you are looking for other tips, tricks, solutions, how-tos, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksaw Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel. And you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. It's me, Mario!